Hi, Moses. Lord is here to talk a little bit about uh, Calvinism and I guess um, uh, some of the methodology that's used to argue against uh, Calvinism just a little bit. Uh, if you haven't been keeping up with uh, my videos, I guess uh, lately I've been interacting with uh, Mr. Louis Ruggiero lately uh, a lot about the doctrines of grace, uh, about Calvinism. He's uh, putting out a 12 part series called Refuting Calvinism. One of the, I guess one of the things that comes out the most uh, when talking with, uh, I guess I'll just say non-Calvinists, since he does not like to be called Armenian, and a lot of people don't, but uh, theologically speaking they are, um, there tends to be a lot of, they think, they, they take their interpretation of what they think Calvinism is, and they present that interpretation as being Calvinism. Unfortunately, what most people present as Calvinism when they try to argue against it is, I guess, what we would call the hyper-Calvinist position, which uh, the Reformers clearly, uh, at least their thinking, rejects it. That's the type of Calvinism, um, I don't even like calling it Calvinism, uh, it's more of a stoic fatalism. Uh, it's the kind of theology that, that basically says, you know, sit there and do nothing, it's going to happen anyway. That is fatalism. That is not what Calvinism teaches. Uh, for whatever reason, they tend to portray Calvinism in that kind of light, and that really um, ruffles my feathers, and I'm sure it ruffles the feathers of uh, other Calvinists. In, in one sense, you know, we'd rather... Um, I just want to be presented rightly, you know. I mean, if our position really is wrong, present it right. There's no need to argue against the wrong position. For instance, within Calvinism, simply because we deny a libertarian of free will, okay, um, the, the, the position is then taken, oh, well, then that must mean that uh, they don't believe in making choices or anything like that. And then, you know, then they start spewing off, oh, well, that's absurd. Didn't you choose to, to post this video and stuff like that? And it's like, no, that's not the issue. Um, there seems to be a lack of willing to, to really sit down and think through these issues, you know. The issue is not, at least with Calvinism, it's not, do we have a will or don't we? Calvinists agree that we all have a will. The issue is, how does the will choose? How do we choose the things that we do? Do we choose them freely or randomly? Uh, are we uh, determined to choose something of necessary causation? Or is there a type of freedom, uh, the kind that Calvinism espouses, is freedom to do what you want to do, what you desire? And so then the question from there gets driven further, uh, it gets driven further a little bit, well, what do you want to do? And what determines what you want to do? Uh, to this, the Calvinists would say, well, you know what, well, it's the human heart, you know, it's our nature. And so then, well, what is our nature in this case? It's, of course, into total depravity and things like that. Well, we're sinful, um, so we choose sinfully. We don't choose sinfully against uh, against our will. We're not forced to sin in any type of way. Uh, when a person sins or does anything, they do it willingly. And you know, even like the objection, well, what if they put a, a gun to you, uh, to you or something like that? Um, well, you've just your choices have been narrow, but you still choose according to your strongest desire. Do you want to live, uh, or do you want to get shot? You know, you, you can still make a choice uh, as far as cooperating in there. Again, it's just what determines that choice. You know, and then things like, well, uh, within the nature of God and stuff like that, uh, obviously God knows everything. That's not in question. Or Calvinists start to differ. We start asking the question, well, how does God know what he knows? And the Calvinists will say, well, God knows what he knows. So they'll say about the future and things like that. Because God has decreed them to be so. That's how he planned it. That was his blueprint, his script for all of uh uh, for all of creation, if you can put it that way, versus the Armenian would say, well, God knows everything because God foresaw it, or he, you know, he looked down the corridors of time, and thus, that's how he knows. You know, so really, you're given two different perspectives, but having one shouldn't deny um, one of the other, or, or, or at least get rid of possibilities, and I, I think that's really what, uh, uh, what Armenians, or non-Calvinists, really need to be open to it, to really sit down and think uh, through these issues and see what the Calvinists are really saying and discern what they're not saying. And thus I've been asking Mr. Ruggiero for documentation of his claims and he says, well, the Calvinist is going to teach this and this. Um, he's read several books. I have those books that he's read uh, up on my shelf as well. And what he portrays as Calvinism I do not find 
uh, in those books there, which is why I obviously disagree heavily with him and have uh, even questioned his integrity. Uh, yes, his Christian integrity, uh, especially since he claims to have knowledge uh, of Calvinism, and indeed he does have a standard that he set himself uh, to be held accountable to, and uh, that's simply what's going on there. Needless to say, I'm going to be posting up a series of videos uh, from some studies that I did on the Westminster Confession at my church, uh, from chapter 3 in particular on the decrees of God and I hope that I can offer these uh, as clarification on what Calvinism teaches about the decrees of God, uh, the decrees concerning sin and evil uh, and even clarify some issues regarding free will. Hope you guys enjoy.